Hey, my Saints Demon Church family and friends, this is Kevin James here. You know, I remember an old song we used to sing that says, He's done so much for me, I just can't tell it all. And I get so excited when I personally think about all that God has done for me and my family during these uncertain times. I cannot tell it all. Family, we can't ever repay Him for His goodness, but we can be obedient and give back what He requires. 2 Samuel 24, 24 says, The king replied, I will not offer sacrifices to the Lord my God, burnt offerings that cost me nothing. Wow, it's so exciting to be able to give back to God. So hey, here's how you can give back to God through St. Stephen Church. Number one, if you're worshiping with us in person today, you can give by placing your gift in the offering receptacles located outside of the sanctuary doors right after this service. Number two, you can give online at ssclive.org. Number three, you can text SSC Live to 833 602-0575. Number four, you can cash at us at dollar sign SSC Live 1. And finally, if you're an old schooler like me and my wife, you can also mail your check to the attention of the trustee board here at St. Stephen Church, 1018 South 15th Street, Louisville, Kentucky, 402 one zero. So come on, church. Let's worship the Lord together in giving. Let's honor him for his goodness. Legacy, preserving the history of our ancestors, reflecting on the wisdom of those who got us to this point. The legacy lives on. Legacy of St. Stephen Church and our pastor, Dr. Kevin W. Kaiser. What a wonderful giant in the ministry that he is, and also St. Stephen Church of almost 100 years of service here in our community. With Pastor Kaiser being one of the five pastors, but one of the second longest tenure next to his grandfather. What a wonderful thing that he's done, the growth that's taking place here at St. Stephen, not only as a church, but as it's spread throughout the world. St. Stephen, Dr. Cosby, happy anniversary. 
what a wonderful time to be able to be a saint to be saint. Why St. Stephen? Because every time I walk in this church, Pastor Cosby has a way of speaking to my heart and not just my brain. St. Stephen has a mission that I will always follow and believe in. One is to change lives. Two is to strengthen families. And three is to transform communities. That's the legacy of St. Stephen Baptist Church. Hello, this is Deacon Maxwell, and I was recently asked this question. What is the reason that you work, choose to worship at St. Stephen Church? Let me say this. There are so many reasons I choose to worship at St. Stephen Church. Some of them include awesome worship, great pastor who is both anointed and is a biblical scholar, a second to none music ministry which enhances our worship service, my personal passion, a vibrant men's ministry, and of course, interaction with a light spirit filled people. These are just a few of many reasons I choose to worship at St. Stephen Church. I feel that there is plenty good room at St. Stephen Church for everyone of every age. And the slogan we use really defines who St. Stephen Church is. We are connected to God, connected to people. Thank you.
43 years, y'all. Come on, give the Lord glory. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together for the Lord is good. Come on, can we celebrate pastor and people weekend? Come on, y'all. He's already here. Come on, clap your hands. Let's show our love for our pastor, the best pastor and the best first lady in the world. I don't care what nobody says. <laughs> We love our pastor and our first lady, our first family, and we are grateful for 43 years. That's a long time, man. I'm, I'm 41, so that means <laughs> I wasn't even here yet. Kevin Jane, okay, he was here. Yeah. He had a fro, so we know he was here. <laughs> I'm sorry. 43 years. Welcome our online campus. Come on, clap your hands. For all of our members all across the world, our Indiana campus, our Hardin County campus, our Dosca Manor campus, and those that still aren't comfortable with coming back to church yet, you in your pajamas, it's okay, eat your breakfast, but this morning, you're going to throw them eggs and that bacon and that biscuit all over the kitchen today, I promise you, because we're going to have a praise party this morning. Hallelujah. Let's, if you're able to stand... Let's stand as we go before the Lord in prayer. If the president walked in the room, you would stand. But the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who woke you up this morning, who gave you the activity of your limbs and you can breathe, hear, and smell, we owe him reverence. Let us stand and go before the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you so much. You're so good. You're so mighty. You're so glorious. 43 years of powerful ministry life changing a lot of us would not be who we are if it wasn't for the word that you have put in this man of God the love that you have put in this woman of God the love that he has for people the love that he has for his church the love that he has for Simmons College of Kentucky the love that he just has for his community wanting to see his community rise and be better. We thank you for how he's blessed people all over the world, all over the country. There's not a place that I can't or do go that they know his name because of how impactful this man of God's ministry has been to the nations. God, we thank you for Pastor and People Weekend. We thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for clothing us in our right mind. Thank you for putting food on our table. Thank you for putting clothes on our back. Thank you when we woke up this morning that we still had the air running and the lights were on. God, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. Now, God, Holy Spirit, you are already here, so move in this place. Manifest your presence, deliver, set free, heal like only you can. And we'll be careful to give your name the glory, the honor, and praise that is due to you. Because, God, you have everything that we need in Jesus' name. And we thank you that we are blessed. Let's go. Let's give God praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go. Listen, we got something special for you, Rev. Let's do it.
that you need. Let's welcome the baddest man in the land, the Simmons Falcon Band. Come on. God's creation. morning scripture. This morning scripture is coming from 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 8. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is the judge, who is the judge of living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching for the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching but having itching ears they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths as for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, and do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have, forgo I have forgot the good fight. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness with the Lord, the righteousness judge, with the righteous judge will always will award me on the day and not only me, but all who have loved his appearing. Bless the hearers, the readers and doers of God's most holy word. There's a blessing in this room today. There's a breakthrough in the room today. You know, you realize what you get out of, of, of the service is what you put in. And you realize that there is a blessing for each and every one of you. God has something tailored specifically for your life. And we want to declare in this room that it's already been released. Welcome, Pat Mathis. <laughs> Come on, how many of you came expecting something from God today? There's a blessing in the room today. Are you? So get ready. Get ready. get ready. get ready. It's already been. How many of you believe that? Listen, there's a healing in the room today. Are you?
you can tell him whatever you need. Whatever you need. The heavens are open. The spirit is flowing. He's in the room today. Whatever you need. Whatever you need. The heavens are open. And he's pouring out a blessing. You won't have room to receive. Whatever you need. feel blessed today on this 43rd pastoral anniversary. Amen. 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 My name is Ebony Ingram Jones, and I am here to welcome each and every one of you into the house of the Lord. If you are visiting with us, would you please stand or wave your hand or give us a shout so that we know you're in the building. Any visitors? Amen. 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 On behalf of our pastor, we'd like to say thank you for worshiping with us today, and we hope this will not be your last time. We want to say welcome to all of our digital um, worshipers. If you've never worshiped with us before, welcome today. Amen. Amen. Now, we don't, you know, back in the day, we would pass the love and all that good stuff, but we take selfies, right? 
oh, I don't have my phone. Who has their phone? Miss Monica's got her phone. We want to encourage everybody to take out their phones. You're going to take a sweet selfie. I'm going to take one with Miss Monica, and we're going to post it, and we're going to say, Sunday's off for church and best pastor ever. That's what I'm going to put. Amen. All right, St. Stephen. Amen. Again, thank you all for worshiping with us, and we hope you come again. Go ahead, clap one more time for vision. Y'all didn't see all those three buildings. Come on, for vision in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy 43rd anniversary to our pastor, first lady, and people. Amen. This is the only guy that will share his month. I've been around a lot of preachers, and they want their month to themselves, but he has shared his legacy, his, this moment with our seniors, which are the pillars of the church. Amen. That's how selfless our pastor is. And what you just saw on that video, I'll just brief, we are targeting the payoff Harding County by this time next year. Come on, y'all should be shouting. I ask Rev all the time, what is it that you want? He says, I want to pay off these bills. So we want to help Rev. We want you to join in the cause and we're going to liquidate our debt in Harding County. Amen? Amen. Y'all should be screaming. Amen. There's one thing about being leadership. It, it's, it's taxing. You always trying to think about how to make things move and go. We can liquidate that debt in Harding County. That would be a tremendous burden off of our church and congregation. So we want you to, you'll hear further more about the Exodus Project. But I just want to talk about Pastor real quick. Um, in 2 Timothy, you got that up there, Brother David? It just talks about leaders who do well deserve double honor. Do we have a leader that leads well? Our pastor, amen. Well, and receive twice as much pay. This man he ain't asking for pay. He's just asking that we do our part as members of St. Stephen Church. He's made it publicly known that anything you all give, he always, him and Miss Barnett, gives back. But today I'm asking, I'm going to challenge you to whatever you do, consider doing double. Whereas we talk about the, the heart this month, we always talk about the heart that we want you to give from your heart. If pastor has married you, anybody he's married in this building this morning, uh, uh, me, <laughs> Um, if he has called and checked, he is very in tune with our membership here. So we want you, if he has been anything but good and a blessing to you, we want you to consider doing double of what you were going to give today. Amen. 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 So put up the scripture. We're going to do it one more time. Um, it was second Corinthians. Let's read as a corporate body. Y'all ready? One, two, three. Let's read.
Come on, give God praise. He promised you that he will give you more than enough. More than enough that you need to do what you need to. But today we want to bless the man and woman of God for their ministry here at St. Stephen. Can we give God praise one more time? Amen. Quick, before I move on, we will have, we don't have time for every ministry to come up today. So there will be ministry baskets on each side. So if your ministry leaders put your gifts in those baskets as we expedite. But let everybody stand this morning as we go to God in prayer. And we're going to walk, as always. There's five ways to give. Online, push pay, um, cash app. Whatever you decide to give this morning, consider doing double. Touch your name and say double. double. Amen. And hold it up. Say it again. Get. Oh. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And I want to recognize uh, Margaret McGarry. Magari, I'm sorry, Craig Greenberg. Oh, oh, pastor's got him. I don't have to do it. Amen. That's his job. <laughs> amen. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for the abilities and the um, warning, the willingness to serve and to sow into this ministry. As you have given us, Father, you have given a lot of us abundance, more than we need. And you said in your word that whatever we give, you will meet it. You will always not, you will never leave us in lack, but in abundance, Father, as we give to your service. That the church may have what is needed to carry on. Be with those in this moment, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. It's time to give. Let's do it. Come on, put your hands together. Let's have church this morning. Cut your hands. We just to proclaim how good the name of Jesus is.
music ministry let's give the lord hand clap of praise amen there's no celebration like a saint stephen celebration amen i rise as we're marking some birthdays this week as well as anniversaries we want to wish a happy birthday to danielle polian happy birthday to you amen robert mason deacon nicole irvin kim wilson vicky montgomery cecil clarity celebrating a birthday god bless you Deacon Don Anderson, Vanessa Coleman, Tamelia Hill, Barbara Dougherty, Letitia Griffin, Charles Cavell Johnson, Senior Head Usher for 26 years. Happy birthday to you. Also, Pastor Cosby and Sister Cosby's grandbaby, Kylo Cosby, turned two years old. Happy birthday. And happy birthday to our church administrator extraordinaire, Sherry Mills, celebrating a birthday. God bless you. Happy anniversary to Davis and Deacon Lisa Burris celebrating their second anniversary. Happy birthday as well to Vincent and Regina Barnes celebrating their 31st anniversary. Happy anniversary to Deacon Steve and Cynthia Gibson celebrating their 39th anniversary. Royce and Patricia Standard are celebrating their 40th birthday, 40th anniversary rather, and Pierre and Patricia Spaulding celebrating their 45th anniversary this week 
Also, congratulations to Laquita Gaskins on our Hardin County campus, who now has her own radio show, What Do You Want to Talk About with Laquita? On Envision Radio. You can hear every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. on EnvisionRadio.com. We're keeping in prayer these members of, the, of St. Stephen's community, Martha Bailey at the Seneca Rehab Center, keeping in prayer Lisa Latham and Arnett Henderson. They're recovering from surgery. Lynn Tyler recently had a stroke and is in recovery. Millie Ward at Fraser Rehab, and we're lifting up James Williams, brother of Eddie McKenzie, who passed, and his homegoing is this Saturday. We're keeping all of these in our prayers. Heavenly Father, pray your richest blessing to be with each and every one of these that we lift up to you and those that we name in our hearts just now. Bless us only you know how to bless. And we give you all thanks, praise, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's receive now the pastor of St. Stephen Church, our senior pastor of the Reverend Dr. Kevin W. Cosby. God bless you. Let's give it up for Brother Ken also. Amen. Amen. I gave Ken some shout out and Jason looked at me and said, what about me? So let's give Jason, please. It's a shame. I mean, come on, man. It ain't always about you, Jason. <laughs> no, nah, let's give it. He's all, Jason's wonderful. I just. Thank you so much. Give it a shout out for Barnett, wouldn't you please? My God, my God, I thank you so very much for these 43 years. Wow. When I started as pastor of St. Stephen's, Jimmy Carter was president. That's a long time. And for the church at that time in 1979 to have faith in a five-year-old kid is just absolute. Now, that's faith, right? So thank you so very much. God has, um, has uh, blown my mind. I don't have words to communicate what I have seen God do during these 43 years. And I am thankful because um, it would be impossible. In fact, the real credit goes to those in the pews who make it happen. So to the deacons and to this wonderful choir Amen. God bless you. My God. To my uh, colleagues in music ministry um, and to the, those who are behind the scenes. You don't see them, but behind this wall, there's some people who are making this happen. And they never get to come out and take a bow. And these ushers. Amen. And church is for everybody, right? It's for, it doesn't matter who you are, it's for everybody. And we got a door for everybody. If, you, if you're educated, you can come through these doors. If, you are, um, if you're bougie, you can come through those doors. But if you're ghetto and smoke weed, that's your door. But, uh... All right, don't, don't, don't feel bad. We can smell it. Come on to church anyhow with your high self. All right? That's the ghetto usher. Amen. Twelve gates to the city. Hallelujah. All right? Amen. It is always interesting that um, during my anniversary, um, Barnett and I, our, our 43rd year, we always uh, fall in conjunction with the political season. And many people say, well, politics doesn't belong in the church. Yes, it does. Vaccinations for COVID-19 is political. If you say you love people, you're concerned about people holistically. So therefore, 
How can I say I love people and not be concerned about sanitation? How can I say I love people and not be concerned about water in Flint? Or water in Jackson? Right? You don't, you know, you don't, that's Greek thought. You don't fragment people. People are whole. Okay? And so politics is critically important. And uh, we have some persons who are with us who is running for office. Um, first of all, um, Mackenzie Cantrell. Would you stand, Mackenzie? And she is running for <laughs> Court of Appeals. Patricia Lister, would you stand? Yeah. Court of Appeals. Tracy Davis. And I want to give a shout out to one of our own. Uh, talking about Brianna's Law and who has been such a help to the entire community. And that's Sister Paula McCraney. I love me some Paula. Come on, let's give it up. She's our own. I believe tomorrow, Councilwoman Keisha Dorsey. Are you here, Keisha? Stand up, Keisha. It's my daughter here, yo. And Keisha is going to make an important announcement tomorrow at 2 o'clock concerning redlined communities. That's us, y'all. Amen. It's going to be a major announcement, perhaps an announcement uh, unparalleled, unprecedented in the United States. Right? That's Sister Keisha, all right? Amen. Okay. And also... Um, Craig Greenberg, would you stand? I've known Craig for some time. Craig um, and I were on the uh, Board of Trustees of the University of Louisville together. And I'll never forget, we got, went, a tour of, uh, went on a tour of West Louisville, and I got to know him on that tour. I don't know if you remember that. We, we sat right next to each other. And uh, he's a man... Um, that I have a lot of confidence in. You know, I can't not endorse anyone because I will get in trouble. But he's here, y'all. Okay. And there's really only one person who I would probably get with besides him. That's Rachel, his wife. All right. So we thank God. I mean, let's give him some love again, all right? He worked with the Republican um, Senate and a Republican House of Representatives to help secure monies for Simmons College that has never been secured before. And that is Morgan McGarvey. Morgan has some big shoes to fill. John Yarmouth, what a great job John has done. But Morgan is up to the task. And Morgan, we thank you so much. He helped us secure for Simmons College over $6 million. Amen. Okay, and is there somebody else that might be running for Senate? Come on now. Let's give it up for Charles Booker. Come on now. You know, a lot of uh, Charles, I'm so proud of you, man. I read his book. Um, from the hood to the holler. 
I've read it. I mean, I can tell you pages and everything. I've carved it up. I read the whole thing. I called you and told you I did about the fire when you was a child and, and everything, and especially the part where you mentioned me. <laughs> I got that highlighted. And stuff. But uh, man, may the Lord be with you. He is a, comes from a Christian background. I mean, deep Christian roots, and we are extremely proud of him. Let's give it a one more time for him. And if I did not mention anyone, it's because it's, it's did I, anyone was omitted? Did I do a good job, Nicole? Okay, thank you so much. She will let me know. <laughs> okay. Uh, and let me say this. That, oh, my sister, please forgive me. Tell us your name. I'm S S Shively City Council. Michelle Thomas. <laughs> Shell Thomas. Shell, forgive me, I can't see. There's lights on, but go ahead. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? All right. Um, Sharon Baker. Thank you so much, Vantay. Sharon, if you're watching, would you please, this woman is an absolute war. Thank you so much, Vanta. Sharon Baker, uh, who is, uh, has been in the hospital. Barnett and I went to see her last Friday, Saturday, and she's fighting. She's got some physical challenges, but she's coming back. And she's running for office, and so in her absence, in the hospital, let's give her a thunderous applause. Thank you, Vanta. Now, a whole lot of elected officials make promises before the election, and they make excuses after the election. We want promises before the election. We want productivity after the election, right? Because the Martin Luther King said, and if you read his I Have a Dream speech, he said this. Um, he said, uh, in the South, they won't let you vote. In the North, they won't give you something to vote for. And we need something in our community to vote for. We need tangibles. I'm glad we had June 19th. That's good. But we don't need holidays. We need paydays. Okay. We need resources because politically speaking, the black community has always been overlooked and underfunded. And we pay taxes. And we vote. And politics and our vote is not a gift. It's an exchange. It is something for something. And that's why our foreparents died for us to have the right to vote. Let me tell you what politics is. Polis, our speakers from Indianapolis city, Greek word for city. Annapolis, Minneapolis is the Greek word for city. And Paul McCraney and others who are part of and uh, David James, others um, attempted to get our school the largest allocation ever given. And that was 7.5. They said, we're going to do it. And then through politics, and it's all politics, because let me tell you something. When you want something done, it's not about power. It's about the will. You have to have the will to get things done in our community. Don't bring me the okie doke. I am a Democrat, but I'm not a Democrat. That's right, brother. And you're a Democrat when you don't get anything for your vote. Right? 
So we didn't get the money. And it was a lot of deflection. Well, you, this person says you can't have the money. This is out of compliance. This is out of compliance. No, you didn't have the will. It's the bottom line. Because had in the day when we were trying to get this money, Ricky Jones been mayor and Sadiqa Reynolds been county attorney, we would have got more than $7.5 million. All right. So we thank God for these who are running. Listen to me. It is critically important that we go out to vote. You're not going to hear me. Local elections are more important than national. Local elections. The issues that you face on a daily basis are decided not nationally, locally. Our school board is potentially in the greatest mess since Brown. If we don't get the right people on that school board. Did, did y'all somebody say who? And there's a preacher out. I can't mention his name, but it's a preacher out there. Great preacher. I didn't say it. If we don't get that school board, but it's, it's roads, that's a local decision. Who gets what locally? The things that, that affect your life daily are decided in city council and in the mayor's office. That's the bottom line. So you might say, well, I'm waiting until two years from now. No. What Jesus said to Judas, what thou doest, thou doest quickly. We need to do this quickly. We need not only to get out to vote, but we need to get everyone we can to go out to the polls and make the ballot box a blessing box. Amen. Amen. And how appropriate it is for me to introduce our preacher, the Reverend Dr. Theron Williams. Yeah. Okay. Before Pastor introduce him, we have a presentation. I think Mr. McGarvey has a presentation for you, Pastor. All right. So we didn't want to forget that. So, and then you can introduce our speaker. I'm always interrupting something. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Happy anniversary. Thank you, sir. Thank you. My friends, Dr. Kevin W. Cosby, I bring you a special citation this morning. And I say special, I mean special. Mm -hmm. As you see, this is the official citation from the Commonwealth of Kentucky State Senate, but the first of its kind since I've been there. I've been there 10 years. It has made a motion jointly by me the Democratic leader of the Senate, the Republican president of the Senate, Robert Stivers, you see his name is on it, and of course, Senator Gerald Neal, the senator from right here in Louisville. Now, this is, this is the easy part. You know, this is the part, this is the citation. But I think there's a higher authority here than the state of Kentucky. <laughs> All right? And we see people right now, they're looking at Timothy to see the qualifications of a pastor. Mm -hmm. And I'm just here to tell you, a lot of people can meet those qualifications. It takes a special person to lead a church. Right? You have been a leader of our community, of this church. Right? And I think about what that means to lead. It doesn't just mean to lead. It means to challenge. So as we stand here today and we got this big choir and we had all the kids and we got the marching band and we got the balloons, it looks so easy. And it's not. Right? I think it was in his book, Getting to the Promised Land, 
that Dr. Cosby said. <laughs> the black church cannot exist solely as a place where the community comes on Sunday for a respite of the burdens of black people's history and present as the preeminent institution of American descendants of slaves. Black churches must fill their sanctuaries with exhortations to carry out the justice work that must be done to relieve us of those burdens. Am I right? He makes it look easy. But it was in 1971 that Dr. James Cone said, oppressors do not take kindly to those who question their authority. So I don't look to Timothy. I look to the rest of the good book, starting in Luke. Right? It is in Luke where God says that those are called, Jesus says those are called to free the oppressed to bring good news to the poor, to set free the prisoners, right? And it is in Luke chapter 4, verse 24, that he warns, he warns, I truly, I tell you, no prophet is welcome in his hometown. You have been a leader. You have been so much that when we look as Christians and what the good book says in the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are the poor, blessed are the righteous, blessed are the meek, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. It is two chapters later, not in Matthew chapter 5, but in Matthew chapter 7. Verse 24, he says, it is truly a wise man who hears my words and acts on them. And acts on them. Whose house shall be built of rock. You have built the school and rescued it to make Simmons College our HBCU. You have brought good news to our community. You are the largest employer, private employer of black Kentuckians in the state of Kentucky. You have made it look easy. But because of you, this church is built on rock. And may you have another 43 years. Let's give it up for Reverend Morgan McGarvey. Wow. My God. Kevin? Jason, what do you think, man? Oh, my God. All right. Wow. Amen. We got to go out to vote, right? Amen? Amen. Those who are online, let's do this thing, all right? Brothers and sisters, um, Dr. Theron Williams pastor of the Mount Carmel Baptist Church in Indianapolis, Indiana. You're, you're going to say, Pastor, where do you get these preachers from? This man is absolutely phenomenal. Pastor's one of the greatest churches I've ever walked in. My wife and I were there about three weeks ago for an event, and it's just amazing what he has done at this great church for over 30 years. This book, Dr. Jones, Black Church, White Theology, How White Evangelicalism Controls the Black Church. It's a masterpiece. We're going to study it next year in fall excuse me, in, in February for Black History Month. It is a masterpiece. This is not all he's written. He's written multiple books. And he's also an adjunct professor at Virginia Union University. And he is here to bless us. You're going to be blessed 
by Dr. Williams. Amen. So merely following the choir, let's receive our preacher for today, Dr. Theron Williams. Thank you so very much for everything you've done.
I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Is there anybody in here glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Our God is indeed an awesome God and our God is worthy to be praised. Would you pray with me now? Our Father and our God, we come right now to say thank you for your love and for your grace and allowing us to assemble in this place to worship you in spirit and in truth. The hour has come, God, where your word must be preached. We pray, God, that you would give this your preacher clarity of mind, thought, and communication to the end, God, that your people may be edified and you ultimately glorified. And we thank you in advance for what's about to happen. We thank you in reflection for what has already transpired. And we thank you in this now for what you're doing. It is in the matchless name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth we pray. And God's people said, amen. amen. To my friend and brother, the legendary Dr. Kevin Cosby, to his wonderful wife and beautiful family, to the Reverend clergy and to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, it is certainly good to be in this place and my soul has been blessed by this powerful worship experience and this dynamic music ministry. And as they sang this morning, I was just reflecting on what must be going on in heaven. The angels told everybody to be quiet Something is going on at St. Stephen Church. Amen. So we thank and praise God for this moment. I am honored to be in this place and humbled um, to celebrate with my friend 43 years of pastoral leadership. And for 43 years, he still has the energy, the vim and vigor uh, that, that he's always had to push this ministry forward. And see, St. Stephen, that's what happens when you call a pastor at 10 years old. <laughs> you make an investment for years to come. 
and we celebrate uh, Dr. Kevin Cosby for the contribution that he has made not only in the Louisville uh, area, but throughout the state of Kentucky and throughout the United States of America. Uh, Dr. Kevin Cosby has made a tremendous impact. And our world is better as a result of Dr. Cosby. Not only has he provided major leadership for the church, but also for the academy as the president of one of the oldest historical black colleges and universities, Simmons, you are to be honored and commended for that work. And in addition to all of that, he's also a scholar. Getting to the promised land messed me all up. You know, I read that piece and I served as a scholar practitioner for uh, Virginia Union University, the School of Theology, and we have implemented a new concentration in our DMIN program called the Jeremiah Wright Social Justice Concentration, over which I am the scholar practitioner. And I said uh, to Dr. Cosby that one of the required readings for my cohort is going to be Dr. Kevin Cosby's book, Getting to the Promised Land. It's required reading. And so we thank God for him and um, his commitment to the church and his commitment to social justice and how he has led you for these years. You are blessed to have such a legend to be your pastor and your spiritual leader. Come on, let's give it up one more time for Dr. Koski. I want to call your attention to the book of First Kings, chapter 19, and I want to start reading at verse 1. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elisha had done, how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a message to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. And when he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take away my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once, an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up, ate and drank, strengthened by that food. He traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. Elisha fell down under a bush tree, under the juniper tree, and said, I have had enough. I want to put a tag on this text and talk about when you've had enough. When you've had enough. The then welterweight champion of the world, Roberto Duran, the fist of cement, the legendary boxer, the most feared boxer in the lower weight classes in history, Roberto Duran was a beast. He was challenged by the legendary Sugar Ray Leonard for a rematch for the welterweight crown, which Duran had easily defeated Sugar Ray Leonard earlier that year to win the welterweight title. But the rematch would be different. Sugar Ray Leonard not only prepared physically, 
but also mentally and psychologically. On the night of the fight, Sugar Ray Leonard entered the ring with confidence exuding out of every pore. When the bell sounded signaling the beginning of the fight, Sugar Ray Leonard came out in his classic Sugar Ray Leonard style, mimicking his idol, the late great Muhammad Ali. He danced around and popped Duran's head back with stiff jabs. He hit him with one combination after the next. And when Duran would try to launch an assault against Leonard, Leonard would tie him up and then counter with one combination after the next. Leonard was in such a zone that night that he toyed with the fist of cement Roberto Duran, the most feared lower class boxer in history. He did the Ali shuffle. He stuck his face out and dared Duran to swing. And he twirled his right hand behind his back and then punched him in the face with his left. He did all kind of stuff to Duran. Made Duran look like a two-bit amateur fighter. Duran was way overmatched that night. And in the middle of the eighth round, suddenly Duran just stopped fighting held up both hands, and in his native Panamanian tongue said, no mas, no mas, meaning no more, no more. With that, he quit and surrendered his championship belt to the legendary Sugar Ray Leonard and left the ring. When he arrived in his native Panama, he was met by supporters who wrote scathing articles against him. The fans jeered and booed him. They picketed Roberto Duran's house because Roberto Duran was the star of Panama. And they wrote all types of bad letters and even death threats, all because Roberto Duran had had enough. And we shouldn't be too mad at Roberto Duran because somebody in this room this morning may have walked through the doors and you're thinking like Roberto Duran, look, I have had enough. I am tired of this life. I am tired of this marriage. I am tired of this job. I am tired of this sickness. I am tired of what has taken place in my life. And I have told everybody, including Yahweh God, that yesterday, that today is just a replay of yesterday's frustration and futility. And if tomorrow's forecast is more of the same, please, God, you can just cancel it. Somebody in here today, you have come into this room and you have literally had enough. And the truth of the matter is, beloved, if you are in that space this morning, you have come to the right place. Because Elijah shares that space with you. This is Elijah who has had enough. This is Elijah. I mean, this is no Jack Leg preacher. This is Elijah. Uh, the Elijah is the man. Elijah is a prophet who is celebrated by at least three of the world's great religion, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. This is Elijah. Uh, this is Elijah who came on the scene of biblical antiquity, and when he showed up, he just pops up. You're reading chapter 16 and you flip over to chapter 17 and bam, there goes Elijah. Uh, he has no introduction. Nobody introduces him. He is unlike the other prophets. When we meet the other prophets, we know about their history. We know about their parentage. We know where they came from. We know who their fathers are. We get an introduction to the other prophets, but not so with Elijah. You're reading chapter 16 of 1 King, you flip over and Elijah just hits you right in the face. He just shows up. And when he shows up, he is in the word of God. This is Elijah, y'all. 
uh, who called down rain from heaven. This is Elijah who spoke and shut heaven up. This is Elijah uh, who made a cameo appearance over in the New Testament when he was invited to that summit meeting with Moses, Jesus, and himself. This is no jack leg preacher. This is a major prophet. Y'all, this is Elijah. And Elijah had gotten to his quitting point. Elijah had had enough. And my brothers and sisters, when we look at this passage, we'll discover that when Elisha comes on the scene, he comes preaching the word of God. He's preaching to a people who had turned their backs on the God of their fathers. He is preaching to a people who had turned their backs on the God that had brought them out of Egypt with a strong hand. He's preaching to a people whom God had protected for their 40 year sojourn in the wilderness of Zen. How God provided food for them. How he rained down manna from heaven and brought them quail. It is God who made a covenant with them in the wilderness and gave them the Ten Commandments. It is God that empowered them to cross over of the Jordan River into Canaan. It is God that gave them houses that they did not build and gave them land that they did not cultivate and vineyards that they didn't plant. It is God who had given them all of this when they were not a people. It was Yahweh God that made them a people. And now they got comfortable in the land of Israel and decided that God was not the God for them anymore. They turned their backs on the God of their fathers and here is Elijah having to preach to this kind of generation and I understand where Elijah is coming from because we Pastor Cosby got a priest to that same type of people who have turned their backs on the God of our fathers who have walked away from the church and all of a sudden they are arguing that the church is obsolete, that the message of the pulpit is no longer effective. And so they have turned and walked away from the church and we are preaching to that type of generation who said that the church was complicit in our own oppression, who said that theology is inconsistent with who they are, who said that the Bible no longer speaks to them. That's the generation that we are speaking to and that have walked away from the gods of our fathers, not knowing that it is the black church that held us together since the time we got here up until this present moment. It is the black church that held us together through slavery. When the enslaved would come together to worship God, they did it at church. And I know that when the black church came together during slavery times, they couldn't come together. It was illegal for black people to come together to worship God without white supervision. So the white slave master would wait and watch over them with their guns and they had to get everything approved before they moved on with worship. The preacher preached what the white guy told them to preach. The choir sang what they they were told to sing. And we complied with it on Sunday morning but that wasn't real church. Real church took place Sunday night when master was drunk sleep. When our people went to the brush harbor because we had some sanctified space out in the woods, that's where real church took place. When the preacher would stand up and preach to the congregation and would preach hope and life into them, saying, cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine. We'll understand it better by and by. The black preacher preached to them, if God was able to liberate the children of Israel, If God was able to be there with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, if God was able to deliver Daniel from the lion's den, if we hold on just a little while longer, our God is going to show up and our God.
God will show out. It is the black church that held us together through reconstruction. And when reconstruction collapsed at the emergence of the black coals, it was the black church that held us together through segregation and through discrimination and through redlining. It's the black church that was there during the civil rights movement. The black church was the incubator of the civil rights movement. It is because of the black church that that we can vote. It is because of the black church we can live anywhere we want to live. It's because of the black church we have it as well as we have it today. And yet we have a generation of young people who don't know their history, who have walked away from the church. And somebody needs to tell them that you have it as good as you have it because of the sacrifice and the contribution that the black church has made to our country. It is because of the black church. Now you got city council members. You've got a, a state legislature. We've had black governors. We had a black president. We've got black business people. We've got black millionaires and billionaires. We've got black sports personality. We've got black people who are doing great things in community and we have a generation that's eating fruit from a tree that they did not plant and while their lips are dripping with the fruit of that tree, we they are saying to us that we no longer need the black church and that's who we are preaching to today. Y'all, I feel Elijah. Elijah is preaching to a people who have walked away from God and when he comes on the scene of chapter 17 he said there shall neither be dew nor rain except by my word. Heaven was shut up for almost three and a half years. And here Elijah was. Finally he said, you know what? Y'all are worshiping Baal. But God is the God of our fathers. And this universe is just too small uh, for two gods. And so we're going to have to have a contest on Mount Carmel. And when we have this contest on Mount Carmel, you set up your altar. I set up my altar. And whichever God answers by fire, we'll just agree that that is God. Well, the prophets of Baal had the floor first. And the prophets of Baal set up their altar and they called on their gods from morning until noon and God, their God, answered them not a word. It was Elijah's turn. Elijah said, okay, Yahweh, let's show them what a real God is all about. Elisha dug a trench around the altar and he poured water around the altar and he put his sacrifice on the altar and he got down on his knees and started talking to Yahweh. Yahweh got so excited sitting on his throne in glory that he released fire from heaven and it not only consumed the sacrifice but it consumed the altar and lapped up the water around the altar and the people said, Jehovah over Yahweh he is God and they bowed down and they worshiped God and Elijah took out the sword and killed all of the 450 prophets of Baal that was a major evangelistic move of the Old Testament he turned them from the worshiping Baal to worshiping Yahweh y'all that was major and you would think Elijah would have at least got an attaboy from God you would think that Elisha would have gotten at least a pat on the back from God that ain't what happened what happened was Jezebel said if I don't get that preacher tomorrow and do to him what he did to the 450 prophets of Baal May the God of heaven deal with me ever so severely. Elijah got afraid and he started running. He ran out into the wilderness and fell down under a juniper tree and said, I have had enough. Really, my sermon is only eight minutes. I gave y'all that portion for free. Here is what I really want to talk about. That when Elisha had 
gone as far as he could go. Here is Elisha. He said, I have had enough because he is facing Jezebel. And Jezebel had a reputation of killing prophets. Jezebel had killed prophets. Any way a prophet can be killed, Jezebel was able to kill a prophet. And so Elisha said, I have had enough. I know it, it, uh, Jezebel is going to get to me. I know Jezebel is going to take me out. So before Jezebel gets to me, Jehovah, I want you to deal with me. I'm going to fall asleep here. And when I wake up, I want to wake up in heaven. When I wake up, I want to wake up in glory. He said, I have had enough. I quit. I give up. It's too much. God, I've done all of this for you, and this is the results I get. God, I have stood up for you, but it seems as if you have let me down. God, I have run the race for you, but God, there is no reward at the end of the race. God, I have done all of this, and now I'm getting ready to die at the hands of Jezebel. God, you show up and take me out when I go to sleep tonight. I want to wake up in glory. This man is in depression. This man is suicidal. This man has had enough. And it is at that point that an angel of God, a messenger of God, a servant of God shows up, watch it. And the Bible said he touched him. Oh, I like that. He touched him. The, the servant of God, the messenger of God, the preacher of God, uh, the servant of God laid hands and touched the person who had fallen into the throes of depression and was ready to give up. If there is one thing we have to remember, pastor, is that as ministers of the gospel, as pastors of God's churches, we have to stay in touch with the people whom God has called us to serve. Here this brother is ready to give up. But the angel of the Lord, the, the servant of God, showed up and touched him. You know, it is so easy, pastor, for ministers to lose touch with the people that God has called them to serve. We can lose touch. I mean, we can get so big and so far removed from the people that God has called us to serve that when they want to come in to talk to us, it is like trying to get in to see the great and powerful eyes. You've got to get the witch's broom. You've got to jump through hoops just to get in touch with the man that God has called us to serve. we got to stay in touch. And many pastors were not raised the way I was raised. Y'all, I was raised in Detroit, Michigan. The Jeffries Housing Projects. There were eight of us. A mother never finished high school. Father never finished high school. He was strung out on drugs. He was abusive to my mother. He would come home every Friday night and terrorize everybody. I live in the midst of violence. I live in the midst of death. I've seen so many of my friends with whom I grew up shot down in the streets. I've lived to see so many of the people that I grew up with. They have, they have perished. Bad things have happened. I lived in the midst of violence and drugs and hopelessness and despair and deep poverty, not having a change of clothes on a daily basis, going to bed at night hungry, living in the projects, but God has blessed me to move to another level where I can eat whatever I want to eat. I can live wherever I want to live. I can drive whatever I want to drive. God has blessed me, but I cannot forget that there are people who are still living the way I used to live when I was a boy I cannot afford to lose touch with the people that God has called me to serve there was a time when I believed in white Jesus when I first got saved I gave my life to what I thought was a white God 
and I didn't have a problem y'all with white Jesus I thought that that was a representation of the son of God. I thought God was white. I thought Jesus was white. I thought all the angels was white. I thought white was right when I first accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. But as the Lord allowed me to grow and to mature and to develop, he has taught me that it's not what color they were, but they were people of a darker you and I was able to break free of white evangelicalism to embrace a theology that's more consistent with who I am as a black man in America but I have to stay in touch with people who want to hold on to their images of white Jesus I've got to be patient with them and walk them into the knowledge of the truth I cannot afford to lose touch with the people whom God God has called me to serve. He touched him. But not only did he touch him, he challenged him. Told him, get up. Yeah, you, you, you need to get up. You, you, I, I'm not coming to your pity party. I hear you complaining. I hear you talking about, I have had enough. And he's going to go on to say, ain't nobody left but me. I'm the only prophet. God, you're not the only one. I got a cloud of people who have not bowed down to bear. You ain't the only one. And I know you've got some issues. I know you've got some problems. But you're not the only one. But you've got resurrection power at work underneath your skin. So when life knocks you down, you've got the power of God to get back up again. And it is the responsibility of the pulpit not to go to your pity party. But to show up in your life not only to touch you, but to challenge you to get up. I said get up. Oh, you got resurrection power. Get up. And you're right, Dr. Maya Angelo. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may try me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I'll rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes? Shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air, I'll rise. Out from the hut of the history of shame out from the past that's rooted in pain I am the great ocean leaping and wide wailing and swelling I bear up the tide bringing the gift that my ancestors gave I am the dream and the hope of the slave and still I rise if life knocks you down you can bounce back when life puts you down you can get up again I don't know what you've been through this morning I don't know what you're going through in your life but when life knocks you down how many of you know that if you know Jesus you got resurrection power at work underneath your skin get up get up not only did he challenge him not only did he touch him but he also nourished him he said here is some bread and some water eat and drink when you're discouraged when you're down when you're frustrated when you feel like you have had enough church is the place where you ought to be because dr kevin cosby is going to break the word of life with you He's going to break the bread of life with you and feed you with the water of life. When you come to church and you're broken and you're down, it's the word of God that you need. It ain't Twitter. It ain't Facebook. It ain't Snapchat. It ain't IG. It's the word of God that you're going to need if you're going to make it from this point to the next point. That's what Elisha needed. He needed nourishment I was um, at the hotel last night and I just so happened to be watching Nick at night and they had the cartoons on and it was Popeye and I'm sitting there reflecting 
on Popeye Bluto olive oil. And I'm checking it out. It's the same scenario. Olive oil flirts with Bluto. Bluto takes it seriously. He sexually harasses Olive. Olive starts screaming and hollering and complaining. Popeye comes to the rescue. Bluto beats down Popeye. Popeye takes the spinach, beats up Bluto, walks away with Olive. End of story. It happens every single time. You would think at some point, Olive would say, I'm going to stop flirting with Bluto. Or Bluto would say, she's just a tease. I'm not going to fall for it. Or Popeye would take his spinach before he confronts Bluto. And Olive Oil gets pregnant. You're talking about political correctness. That wasn't applied back then. She gets pregnant. She's not married. And we don't know who the baby daddy is. Is it Popeye's? Or is it Bluto's? I think it might be Bluto's. Because Popeye looks like he would practice safe sex. I, I don't think Bluto would. Bluto would just... Go at it. And so they have a baby. And I'm looking at Sweet Pea. And he kind of looks like Popeye, but he's big like Bluto. It's, it's just so confusing. And so I'm checking out Popeye. And, 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 and Popeye is going after Bluto because Bluto is sexually harassing olive oil and he attacks Bluto and, and, and Bluto beats him up. Bluto puts one foot on top of both of Popeye's feet and start hitting Popeye and Popeye is going back, bouncing up, going back, bouncing up and then he takes Popeye and turns him into a ball and bounces him up and down and then kicks him and he goes up in the air and down in the water and as he's going down in the water Popeye says I've taken all I can stand and I can't stand no more. He reaches into to his bosom, pulls out his spinach, pops it open and swallows the spinach. All of a sudden, the pipe in his mouth turns upside down into a propulsion. His feet start spinning like propellers. He comes up out of the water, lands on Bluto, beats Bluto down, gets olive oil and walks away and says I'm strong to the finish because I eat my spinach. That's all I have to say to you. I'm done. When you're down to your last and you can't take it no more. When you have had enough reach into your bosom pull out the word of God I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. Pull out the word of God for they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength mount up with wings like eagles run and not be weary walk and not faint when you ingest the word of God you can make it happen you're strong to the finish because you have feasted on the word of God so why should I feel discouraged why should the shadows come why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my potion a constant friend is he his eye is on the sparrow I know he watches me I sing not because I sound like Luther Vandross I sing not because I sound like Usher but I sing because I'm happy I sing because I'm free his eye is on the sparrow I know he watches me is he alright is he all right? Somebody shout yes! 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 Good.
Come on and bless the Lord for that mighty word that Dr. Theron Williams brought this morning. When you've had enough, what a mighty God, what a mighty God we serve. There may be someone watching online who has had enough. Your back is up against the wall. You don't have anywhere to turn. You're about ready to give up. Let me encourage you to give it to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The one who can pick you up when you're down. The one who can give you your hope back. Someone is standing by waiting to take your call. All you have to do is dial 502-583-6798, extension zero. Or you can email us at newstart at ssclive.org. Or maybe you're here on campus and you're about ready to give up. And you don't know what to do. And you're ready to throw in the towel. Come let one of these decision counselors and deacons pray with you. Come and give your hand to God. A God who can do anything but fail. And restore that hope and joy. As our choir leads us. Why don't you come my brother, my sister. The doors of the church are open. Come on and bless the Lord in this house when you've had enough. Amen. Amen. Walgreens is here doing flu vaccines out there in the concourse. So if you have not had a chance to get your flu vaccine, we ask that you go out in the concourse and get that. Amen. Amen. Maddie's kitchen is open. Amen. And if you arrived after the tithes and offering, we ask that you would leave them out in the offertory receptacles. Amen. Amen. You still have a chance to come on down and give your life to Christ or prayer. As our decision counselors will remain down front. If all hearts and minds are clear, let us go before the Lord in prayer. Always and knowing God. It's once again, Lord God, that we come before you, Lord God, just to say thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for your word going forth in this place, Lord God. Reminding us, Lord God, that we don't have to do this thing by ourselves, Lord God, when we've had enough, Lord God. Lord God, we can just look to the hills, Lord God, from which cometh our help, Lord God, knowing that all our help comes from you, Lord God, who made heaven and earth, Lord God. And for that, we just want to say thank you, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you continue, Lord God, to give us strength, Lord God, when we feel like we can't go on, Lord God. Continue, Lord God, to keep us, Lord God, when we can't keep ourselves, Lord God. Lord God, we love you, we adore you, we magnify you, and we exalt your name, Lord God. Lord God, as we prepare to leave this place, we never your presence, Lord God. Bless us and keep us, Lord God, only as you can. 
till we return to your house once more. These and all the blessed rest in Jesus Christ's name, the soon coming King, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.